My nightmares have been returning more frequently. Today went like any other day. My life, as per usual, has been very repetitive. I woke up, showered, brushed my teeth, picked out an outfit, packed my backpack, put on my shoes, and ate breakfast. Shower, teeth, outfit, backpack, shoes, breakfast. Shower, teeth, outfit, backpack, shoes, breakfast. Eating the same granola bar every single day. My classes aren't any better than my breakfast. The professor rambles on for an hour while I count how many times he taps the piece of chalk on the board. 27, 28. It keeps my mind off the fact that no one around me knows my name, nor do they want to. No one ever pays me any attention. Even in a room full of people, I still feel alone. As my professor finished up his lecture, 29, I continued to evaluate my self-worth. What do I have that makes me any different than anyone else? What is my purpose? I often think I've yet to realize my purpose, but sometimes I just feel no one would really care if I wasn't around to find it. As I was walking out of my class, I saw someone in the distance fall and drop their books. Papers were everywhere. It was sad. No one helped them. A campus full of people and not one person would give them a hand. I guess that's the cruel world we live in, where everyone has to fight for themselves. After my classes, my therapist recommended to me that I should take a long walk in order to relax and relieve some stress. Today, it did the exact opposite. Headed in my direction was my hometown friend, Courtney. Oh no, what if she didn't remember me? Do I say hi? A wave of anxiety took over. I went into panic mode. All I could think of was how this interaction could go wrong. My brain said the safest option was to avoid the situation altogether, and I complied. I put my head up and locked my eyes straight ahead. With each nearing footstep, time seemed to move slower and slower. I caught her to turn to look at me through my peripheral, but I remained forward. 20 feet, 15 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet, 0. Even though the situation was over, I had developed a worse feeling. Regret. What did Courtney do to deserve this? I don't want to be like this. I don't want to push people away. I looked back, but Courtney had already moved on. <sighs> How do you want to fight against yourself when your biggest weakness is you? People see injuries that are physical and become sympathetic for the person. Nobody can see my injury, and that's what makes it the hardest to live with. I'm left alone by others while I struggle to battle the obtrusive voices of my subconscious. They tell me I'm no good and that I will never amount to anything meaningful. I'm starting to believe them. I envy those who don't feel this pain, whose brain is still wired to encourage success and love. Encourage the love for others, but more importantly, the love for oneself. I miss that melody I used to know. The girl who would wake up excited for the day. The girl that everyone loved. That melody is gone. There's nothing I can do about it. I live for tomorrow not because I think it will be any better, but because I'm told to. I know tomorrow will still be filled with fear, emptiness, and hopelessness. I am a sunflower in a relentless winter, sitting there as my petals drop and I begin to wilt away. I want to be wrong, so bad, but broken clocks are still right twice a day.